So one of the tools you'll use most often in this program is called Piazza. Uh, Piazza is a, an internet forum that was built with higher education in mind. Uh, you can post discussion topics, you can post questions. When you post a question, it gives dedicated spaces for the instructor or your classmates to answer. So you can get a rapid answer from your classmates who might be up at the same hour or doing work at the same time, but then you still have a dedicated place for the instructor to come along and give the authoritative answer or to endorse uh, the, the student answer. Uh, you can create polls uh, in the system as well. You can post anonymously to your classmates. So if you're worried about your question, you know, might be a little bit silly, uh, you can post anonymously and not worry about how it reflects on you. You can post privately. Very often our classes will use Piazza for private communication between students and instructors and teaching assistants, just because it gives us one shared place that all the teaching assistants and instructors can talk about uh, your question uh, for that particular class. Uh, and so it's used in a lot of different ways. Um, I love Piazza. It's probably the tool that I spend the most of my time each semester uh, using. And I think it does a really good job of facilitating perusal and casual interaction. Uh, other web forums I've seen, all the interactions feel very formal and feel very, uh, very heavy. Uh, whereas Piazza is very good about, you know, you log in and you can quick, uh, quickly click through a couple topics on the left sidebar, see if they look interesting. If not, you're in and out in under a minute and you know that, okay, nothing interesting has happened in the past 24 hours. Uh, so I recommend checking it every day. Um, part of it is just so you're up to date on the class. Uh, sometimes professors will post things there like announcements or updates to, to grading timelines or anything like that. Um, and it's a, worth keeping up to date with those. They're usually pinned and uh, they appear as an instructor post, so it's very easy to find those. Um, and then I recommend looking at some of your classmates' questions and, and posts and seeing if you can contribute to discussions or answer any of their questions, just because it's a great way to be reminded that you're part of, uh, of a community. Be reminded that there are classmates going through the same course as you, struggling with the same things, and it can help you feel, I think, less isolated. Uh, that's very often the problem with online education is because you're doing all your work from home, you feel you know, a little isolated, a little alone. Even if in person you weren't gonna you know, directly talk to other people, you see people in the room and you know that they're, they're going through the same kind of thing. Piazza, I think, replicates uh, that facet. That you go on Piazza once a day and you find out, hey, there's all these other students going through the same kind of things. They have the same kind of questions I have. I'm not alone in this. And that said, I don't recommend letting Piazza become overwhelming. You're not expected to read every single thing posted by every single student on the entire entire forum. Uh, it's more meant for you to be able to find the discussions that are interesting to you, find the questions you feel you can answer, and get answers from your classmates as well as your instructors. So I recommend perusing. I recommend keeping up to date with it. It can help you feel connected. It can help you get rapid answers, um, but you're not expected to read every single thing posted by every single student uh, in there. So don't let it uh, overwhelm you. Uh, we have a nice series of videos. Um, we filmed to walk you through how to use Piazza. It's pretty intuitive, but there's some features that you might not know about. Uh, and in fact, since we've filmed it, uh, they've added even more features and they've probably added more features uh, since I filmed this. Uh, so make sure to, to poke around, see what's out there. Uh, make sure to update your email settings in Piazza as well, because by default, it sends you a lot of emails, which can also contribute to that feeling of being overwhelmed. Uh, so go in there and, and toggle that just so that it, it serves the role for you that you want it to serve. Um, so I'll kick it over to me in the past and Ebony to walk you through how to use Piazza. When we talk about the OMS program, we sometimes use the metaphor, where is the classroom? On campus, we have a physical classroom, and it's where the discussion, the announcements, the lecturing all happen. In my opinion, in the OMS program, Piazza is the classroom. The lectures are on Udacity like a textbook, and T-Square is there for assignments and resources, but Piazza is where we recreate the personal interactions that are present in a typical classroom. So we'll talk about getting started with Piazza. Then we'll talk about asking questions, reading responses, and providing answers of your own. Now, Piazza can get extremely noisy in classes of this size, so we'll also talk about some workflows for managing your time on Piazza. We generally recommend checking in on Piazza each day while you're enrolled in a class, even for only a couple minutes, just to see if anything catches your eye or if there's any place you can help your classmates out. Once we're registered for Piazza, we'll typically access it from the Piazza link on the left side of T-Square. We also highly recommend bookmarking it separately so you can go straight to Piazza without bothering with T-Square. Here, we find the Piazza home screen. On the left is a list of topics in the class. Right now, the class at a glance is on the right, but as soon as we click on a topic, the topic will appear on the right. Across the gray bar near the top is a list of folders. We'll talk about those in a bit. Across the blue bar at the very top are three tabs. Q&A, Resources, and Statistics. QA is where you'll spend most of your time. It's where you access the forum. 
Resources may list some course information, but in practice, hardly any OMS classes use it. Statistics will show you some student statistics on the course, as well as your own stats. In the top left, you'll find a drop-down box. You can use this to look at a different course. Finally, the gear in the top right will let you modify your profile and change your settings. Let's start with your profile. To edit your Piazza profile, click the gear, then click Account Email Settings. Here, you'll be able to change your name as it appears when you post on Piazza, as well as your preferred email address and profile picture. One thing we highly advise is setting a profile picture. It doesn't have to be an actual photo of you if you aren't comfortable with that, but simply having a unique picture really improves your recognizability when you're posting on Piazza. I can say as an instructor that when I see a name, sometimes it takes a second to remember the conversations I've had with that student in the past. But when I see a picture, I usually remember them pretty immediately. Below here, you can change your email settings for the class. Piazza can send you a lot of emails, depending on how you have it set up. So if you're drowning in Piazza emails, you can change your settings here. The most common task you'll complete on Piazza is reading. From the home screen of Piazza, you can read any of the topics on the left. Just click the topic to load it in the main window. The numbers on the topics indicate how many updates there have been since you last viewed the topic. You'll notice that the topics are flagged with other information as well. This icon with the four lines indicates a topic is a note. That means that the topic is more of a discussion, not a question and answer. This icon with the three bars is for a poll, where you can vote on something. If the topic is a question, it will either appear in red if it is unresolved, or it will have icons showing it has been resolved by a student or instructor. For example, this question is unresolved. We can see there is no answer provided, and so it appears in red on the left. A yellow eye icon means that the question has received an instructor's answer. A green S icon means that the question has received a student answer. For example, in this topic, we see the question has received both instructor and student answers, so both icons appear. A check mark on top of the green S means that an instructor has endorsed a student's answer. There may also be some flags on the left side of the topic list. This flag means the topic or question was posted by an instructor. This flag means the topic is only visible to you and the instructor. This flag means the topic is only visible to a particular subgroup, like a project group or a study group. Finally, there are also flags below the questions. Sometimes an instructor will endorse a question or note as a good note, and this will appear. Unresolved follow-ups are also noted below. These refer to the follow-up discussion, which we'll talk about in a bit. Many of our OMS classes can have several hundred students in them, and as such, the topic list can get very large and can be pretty overwhelming. But remember, there's not usually nearly as much content there as there actually appears to be. But to kind of wade through it, I'd like to show you one of my favorite features that's hidden kind of under a menu in Piazza. It's the archive feature. To get to the archive feature, mouse over a topic, and then hover over the arrow that appears on the left. Then come down to archive. Click it, and the topic will no longer appear in your topic list. Archiving a topic will remove it from your topic list, but it won't remove it from everyone else. And archived topics are still available to you in a way we'll talk about a bit later. But it won't be there to clutter up your view. So if you're reasonably sure that a topic isn't going to have any updates that are going to interest you, or if you feel like the topic has reached its logical end, feel free to archive it like this to keep it out of your way. You can also use this menu to subscribe to email updates for a thread by clicking follow, or to mark a thread as unread if you want to make sure to come back to it later. Once you've selected a topic to read, you'll see the original post at the top. If the topic is a question, you'll see a student answer and an instructor answer here. If the student answer has been endorsed by an instructor, that will also be flagged here. Below the answers, there may be some follow-up discussions as well. One of the most useful features of Piazza is this top nav bar. When you open a topic that has some updates, this nav bar will highlight the updates since you last visited in pink. You can then scroll this bar back and forth to see a chronological history of what's been posted in what order. This also helps you focus on new content since your last visit. There's one other really useful feature on this page, but it's kind of hidden. If you click this star up here, it will add a topic to your favorites. Favorites are listed at the top of your topic list, just under your pinned posts. 
This is a great way to keep track of topics you know you're going to come back to, or to follow updates to topics without subscribing to email notifications. When you're reading Piazza, there are a couple different ways you can navigate. First, there's the topic list that we've been using on the left. Second, you can filter by folders at the top. For example, here are all of the topics in the project folder. The numbers indicate the number of updated posts in each folder. Clicking a folder shows only those topics in that folder. Third, you can use the search bar. The search bar allows you to search by keywords or by certain flags. After you start typing a search query, click the search tips to bring up a list of flags. For example, you can search within titles or for specific contributors by name. Note that sometimes the folder listing across the top won't list every folder. In those cases, you can search by folder here. My favorite navigation features, though, are found under this gear right here. This menu lets you view only certain types of messages. For example, you can view only newly created topics by clicking on Unread. Or you can view only updated topics by clicking on Updated. You can choose to view only instructor posts by clicking on instructor posts near the bottom, which is a great way to focus on getting the crucial content pretty fast. You'll also notice that we've been using compact mode, which shows only the topic titles. You can change that at the bottom. If you're overwhelmed by the amount of new content on Piazza and you just want to start fresh, you can just click Mark All Red at the bottom. Lastly, you can also shortcut these filters. Ebony has unread, updated, unresolved, and following shortcutted right here. You can remove a shortcut by clicking Remove Shortcut while viewing that filter, and you can add a shortcut by clicking Add Shortcut while viewing that filter. So now that we've covered reading content on Piazza, what about posting content? To post a new thread, click New Post in the top left. At the top, you'll select your post type. When you're posting a new topic, it's really helpful to select the right kind of post. Are you asking a question that will have one right answer, like a due date or a clarification on directions? Then you probably want to use a question. Are you just sharing something or asking for something with multiple good answers, like help solving a problem? That's usually better suited for a note. Or if you want to ask a poll question, you can always just choose poll. Piazza lets you communicate privately as well. You can share your post with the whole class, with only a group you're a member of, or only with instructors. Next, select the folder your post will go into. A single post can go into more than one folder. Then, enter your title and post text. Depending on your class, you might be able to choose to remain anonymous, although not all classes have this option. Then, click Post My Question and your post will appear. Or, you can save it as a draft to return to later. You'll see a list of your drafts at the top of the topic list whenever you start to create a new post. But for now, I'll go ahead and post this. After posting, you can edit the post by clicking the Edit button in the bottom left. You can also access other options with the Actions menu in the top right. Only instructors can delete posts, but you can change the visibility if you post by mistake. Every topic, whether it be a note, question, or poll, allows follow-ups down below. You can reply to topic by clicking here, or reply to a follow-up by clicking below. If the topic is a question, you can also edit the student answer. This is a collaborative wiki where students can put together an answer to the question. So if you're providing the one right answer to a question, you may want to add it here. If you're just posting a further question or a general suggestion that isn't necessarily the one right answer, it might be better to post it as a follow-up. One of Piazza's interesting features is that instructors can endorse student answers. As an instructor, one of my favorite experiences is signing onto Piazza, seeing a bunch of open questions, but being able to go through and just endorse student answers because students have already answered the questions for each other. It's much more satisfying to me to see students answering each other's questions and helping each other out rather than everyone relying on the instructors and TAs for everything. With the kinds of students and the kinds of classes we have in the OMS program, I never hesitate to say that I think you'll learn more from your classmates than you'll ever learn from us.